hectic getting there huh maybe you was going to go on vacation and it seemed like everything that could go wrong went wrong and you got these dueling emotions going you're excited about going but boy the trouble of getting there and sometimes you're just in such a bad frame of mind when you get on that airplane or you you get in that car to launch out but but man i man i'll tell you what when we get to heaven it's going to be worth it. all the pain and all the frustration it took to get there. I'll never forget when we went to Hawaii. Am I saying that right? My dad says Hawaii. That's kind of like, how are you? It's Hawaii, right? We went, and uh, man, I, I, I th I'm thinking to myself, you know, what's the big deal? A six-hour flight over there and all this stuff. But when we saw those trees, and I've told you this many times, it's hard to imagine those big old huge, huge trees with flowers all over them. It's nothing like I'd ever seen before. And uh, it's amazing how that the beauty erased all the struggle. Amen. I believe heaven is going to be amazing. I believe heaven is going to be so wonderful. I believe it's going to be so magnificent that everything that we've ever had to struggle with down here will be just a faint memory. <laughs> Amen. And I'm thankful today for the hope of heaven, aren't you? Amen. Amen. I'm glad for people that love you. Aren't you glad for people that love you? Amen. Love you enough to tell you the truth? Amen. Right? Yeah. My son just told me up here, he said, Dad, just so you know, your breath really stinks. I said, thanks for letting me know. Unfortunately, I had a breath mint in my pocket. I said that because we're fixing to shake hands with everybody. And I shook hands with several of you this morning. And if my breath was corrupt and you didn't say nothing, I'm sorry for that. And I'm sorry that you didn't feel comfortable enough to tell me. <laughs> but I love you folks, and I'm so thankful that you're in the house of the Lord today. It is a tradition of ours, and, uh, you know, our salvation is not based on tradition, but tradition can be good. We try to accommodate hospitality. We are truly glad you're here. And so we're going to have a little music, and we're going to get out and shake hands with you, hug your neck, tell you we're glad you're here, and uh, welcome you to the house of the Lord. So shake hands and be friendly this morning. Amen.
of pure and hard. It's the highway to glory. We're walking up the King's Highway. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Well, as we said, thank you for being in the house of the Lord. And if there is any goal we have here at Souls Harbor Church, it's that we could aid you in your walk with God. Because we're going somewhere. Amen. And uh, when this journey's over, boy, we want all of us to be, to be there with the Lord. Hallelujah. This time our ushers are going to come and we'll come to you for the morning tithe and offering. And um, we say to our guest, uh, we're glad you're here and we do not want, expect or want any, you to put any money in the offering. If you did receive a visitor's card, we'd appreciate you dropping that in or getting it back to Brother Wells um, so we can be praying for you. And it sure is good to have Brother Dave home. Amen. Um, so please be faithful to the Lord, not out of necessity or grudgingly, but out of gratitude and love for what he's done for you. Amen. Brother Wells, would you pray for the offering, please? have a revival in the month of April and uh, I reached out to a couple of ministers and their schedules wouldn't permit in April but um, uh, we're going to have a revival May the 19th through the 22nd and I was in prayer and I really felt that I, I, I just want to speak to you as a pastor for just a moment I look out here and I see I see how that Satan has attacked families. There are, the traditional family is, uh, it's becoming more and more of a rarity. It's not the norm anymore. And we're all dealing with complex issues. Yeah. But um, in prayer, I really felt burdened that we have a family revival. And when I say family revival, it doesn't mean that you have to be, you know, the traditional family to come to the revival. But I've asked Brother Victor Persinger if he would come and minister to us on the theme of the godly family. Um, my dad always says, and I've said this a thousand times, if someone's going to show you how to uh, tell you how to grow corn, you need to look in their cupboards. And Brother Victor Persinger has raised five godly godly young men i think four of which are pastors 
and uh, has a daughter, uh, Sister Hannah, and they are very, very a wonderful example of a godly family. And uh, he and I were speaking, and he said, well, do, do you think that it would be okay if I were to share with you, just kind of share with the church and the folks just how kind of we felt like the leading of the Lord and when our kids got up to dating age and various things of how that we pursued a mate and that sort of thing. And I said, absolutely, that's, that's why we're asking you to come because you've done something right, and we want to... Uh, we want to hear what God has done through your life. And so May the 19th, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night, five services, uh, please put it on your calendar. And as Brother Mark Hudson said, not so you can go on vacation, but so that you can come to the revival. Amen. So please uh, uh, be here, support the revival. And I wanted to say... Before we go any further in the service, I just want to love on you folks just a little bit. And say, I'm so thankful and proud of you for how everyone cooked and worked last weekend. We had work day, and so many of you showed up and worked so hard. And then I know it was poor planning on my part, and I'm sorry, uh, but we had potluck the very next day. So you ladies, you had to come to the church and work, and then you had to go home and cook half the evening. Uh, but we had a wonderful, wonderful potluck last week. Lots of food. It was good food. And um, so thank you all very much. And I know that we didn't announce it and we didn't, uh, didn't push it as much as we should have. And some were ill-prepared and you didn't fix anything. And so you didn't feel like you should stay. Um, and I will do a better job of keeping everyone informed to upcoming events. Um, the boys have made slides if you uh, they try to roll that some some way through parts of the service so you might want to pay attention to that but uh, anyway I just want to say thank you to everybody that worked so hard last week and it is a, such an honor to have some of our guests that were here last week for the first time back and I said boy that's a good testament that uh, we didn't run you off the first go round you liked us enough to come back <laughs> amen so but we do love you, and we're, we're, we're so thankful for the growth and in your life and what God's doing. Amen. Well, at this time, Brother Steve's going to sing for us. We would normally dismiss the kids for Children's Church, but today, uh, Pastor Thomas, uh, my dad, has uh, asked to, to um, have the kids up here because he felt like the message was going to be applying to them. And I see some candy over here. I don't know what that's all about. Maybe I'll get a piece of candy. I don't know. Hi, Sister Jeanette. Folks, just do this here at our church. They just wave at me while I'm up here. Yes, we do have nursery. So if you have, uh, if you have a little one that you need help with, we do have a nursery. Thank you, Sister Jeanette. Appreciate that. Brother Steve, minister in song for us. Man, I love the Lord this morning, and I'm going to sing, When He Was on the Cross, I Was on His Mind. Worship the Lord. I'm not on an ego trip I'm nothing on my own I make mistakes and often slip just common flesh and bone But I'll prove someday just what I say I'm of a special kind For when He was on the cross I know I
face of thorns upon his head the blood upon that scarlet robe had stained it crimson red though his eyes were on the crowd that day he looked ahead powerful thought that is amen why did he do it because he looked ahead in time and he saw all those that would respond and uh, they would come to him for salvation and I think uh, one of the most powerful lines in that song to me is he knew me yet he loved me what a mystery that is you see I know me and if I was from the outside looking in and I could see what I see from the inside, I would wonder why anybody would love me. But I'm glad he does. I'm so glad he does. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Amen. It humbles me. It humbles me. And it challenges me. And it encourages me. Yes, and it strengthens me. The amen. love of God. Amen. Well, we're honored today, today to have Dad preaching for us. Um, they have bought a house down in Phoenix. And I've asked them several times, I said, are y'all moving to Phoenix? And they said, no, we're not moving to Phoenix. We just want a place to stay when we're down there. But then he told me, he said, well... They tell me I have to live there six months out of the year. I said, it sounds a lot like you're moving to Phoenix. But uh, I love my dad. I appreciate him. He come back, and he has worked so hard around here since he, he came back. He has fixed our ice machine. Him and Brother Eddie fixed toilets that were leaking, uh, just working so hard to make things better around here. And uh, one thing I love about my dad, and, and, I, and I mean this, he is my hero. Everywhere he goes, he is talking to people about Jesus. Everywhere he goes. The conversations that we have daily is, Son, I got a chance to pray with someone today. 
I got a chance to take somebody hand, by the hand and call on Jesus with them today. And um, what an inspiring, inspiring man uh, that loves people. So just open your spirit and let God speak to us today through the preaching. Dad, come and take your liberty. Amen. I hope I can uh, be to where that uh, I live up to some of it. <clears throat> I'm going to turn this around that way to where y'all can say amen and we can hear you. I, I just wanted to say that I'm so glad to have our kids up here today. And uh, boys and girls, uh, I, I'm just a simple guy, really and truly. I'm very simple. But uh, I wanted to preach to y'all today and let y'all know some things that would be beneficial to you and uh, that you have a good life. Uh, has Bryce put the put the title of the message up today where folks can see it? Uh, <clears throat> but uh, it's good to have Elaine here. Uh, she and I, uh, I was talking to her about the Lord down at Lowe's, and uh, some a lot of people promise me that they'll come to church and they don't show up, you know, and then they they, they have to deal with the consequences of lying. Uh, but uh, it wasn't this lady. She promised me she'd be here, and she showed up this morning. And Don and Debbie, good to see them. They, they, they found out I was going to preach today, and they still came. So <clears throat> that's good. But it's, it's all of y'all. It's just so good to be in church with you today. And, and uh, I don't know whether y'all realize it or not. Uh, a lot of people make church some, uh, I don't know, some big cathedral or something. But uh, we're just everyday folks. And you're looking at a simple man today that just loves God and loves people. And uh, I feel like the Lord has definitely given me something that will bless everybody in this building and help you today. Uh, oh, we got it up there now. A clear path to heaven uh, is the name of the, the message today. And, and uh, that's really and truly what it's all about is getting a clear path to heaven to, because everybody everybody that's come here today unless somebody made you come and if they did uh, well that, that, like the guy said that he was on drugs when he was a child uh, because his mom and dad drug him to church every day I mean every, every service uh, unless that's the case I really feel like you came today desiring to go to heaven I believe everybody here, that, that would be what you would say, I really desire to go to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. Hell is a place where the flame never goes out. The torment never stops. People are screaming. People that went to hell, that wound up in hell, they're screaming today. And uh, it's a horrible place. But I believe every one of you desire to go to heaven. And if you do... I'm going to ask you today to listen just intently and, and pay attention and be to where you apply what God has for us today. Brother Eddie, uh, could you come get this candy? Uh, I thought those, those kids after church, uh, I want them to be to where they, if, don't give any candy to any kid that might get choked, uh, but let them pick out five pieces a piece. And if there's not enough there, I'll get some more. But I'm, I'm, I'm actually paying y'all to listen to me. <laughs> Will y'all listen, boys and girls? Will you listen? Raise your hand if you'll listen. Uh, I saw that hand go up. I, I've seen folks like that when we give an altar call. Uh, how, many, how many of you would like to get saved? You're lost, you'd like to get saved. And they won't raise their hand like this. They go... <clears throat> I read this. Uh, I read this thing, and I, I thought I'd share it with you. Oh. It said during a routine visit uh, to my family doctor, and this, uh, this is an elderly person. Uh, I asked him, "How do you determine whether or not a retiree should be put into an old folks or a nursing home?" Well, he replied, 
Uh, we fill up a bathtub with water, and then we offer a, a teaspoon, a teacup, and a bucket to the retiree and ask him or her to empty the bathtub. Oh, I, I get it, I said. A normal person would use the bucket because it's a lot bigger than the teaspoon or the cup. Nope, he said. A normal person would pull the plug. <laughs> Let me ask you, would you like a, a bed near the window or near the door? <laughs> Some of y'all didn't get it. <clears throat> you just wait till you get old, though. Uh, for the text this morning, I want to use in Luke 15, uh, chapter 15, verse 1 through 7. And if y'all would stand, would you kids stand to, with, with me too for the reading of the word? <clears throat> Luke chapter 15, verse 1 says, Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, this man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders and, and uh, rejoicing, and when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and his neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over the ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Brother Wells, would you pray and just ask God to anoint this vessel of clay this morning? Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> In uh, James' writing and also in 1 Peter, uh, God giveth grace to the humble. But before that, he says, God resisteth the proud, and he giveth grace to the humble. Uh, so I, I would just say today that, uh, and, and let me explain what grace is. That's when God puts something in your heart that starts drawing you toward him. It's giving you a desire to serve Him, to live for Him. And, and, and let, let me just say up front, boy, it's so good if you sell out to God, if you really sell out to Him. Hey, you're looking at somebody that has the favor of God. Now, I, I, I'll be happy if God, if God doesn't do this for me, but my wife can vouch for it. Uh, almost continually, we drive up to a restaurant or a store or whatever, and a parking place comes available right in front of the door. Just little things. Now, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, to, I'm, I, the Lord knows I would not tell you a story. I'm just saying the favor of God has been upon my life. Now, I'd be happy if the Lord said, I'm going to make it where you have to walk two blocks to get to the door. I'd still praise Him, and I'd still worship Him, but I'm just saying... God blesses those that sell out to Him. If you get on that clear path to heaven, you're going to have the blessings of God in this life and heaven when you get finished. Because any father would desire his son or his daughter to be blessed. They'd, they'd want them to have the best. they have a good life. And our Heavenly Father, how much more He desires for us to have a good life. He really does. Uh, but anyway, just remember, God giveth grace to the humble. When, when people are humble before the Lord, and this whole chapter 
of Luke chapter 15 is dealing with uh, repentance and the rejoicing in heaven. That's the whole chapter. When you read this chapter, that's what you're going to see in this chapter that, that God is emphasizing that through repentance, through you truly repenting, that heaven's going to rejoice whenever you make it home. Amen. When you make things right. Now, uh, we want to talk about what causes joy in heaven and what causes repentance this morning. Uh, this is the complete chapter of, of chapter Luke, uh, of chapter Luke, uh, Luke 15, uh, the whole chapter. The first parable that he talks about here, and it's three parables in this, in this chapter. The first parable is the one that we use for a text this morning when he talked about the lost sheep. The lost sheep, when, and uh, he, he told about the sheep being lost, the, the shepherd going after it, putting it on his shoulder, bringing it home. And then he talked about the rejoicing. And then he, he, he emphasized what he was really saying there was that's what happens in heaven. And then the second parable is dealing with the lost coin or the lost piece of silver. This... Uh, this uh, lady, she lost one of her pieces of silver, her coin. She lost it, and uh, when she, the the Bible tells us that she swept the house and she cleaned everything, and and she worked so diligent, got her a candle that would be getting you a LED light in this day and time, and shining up under the bed and and looking until she found it, and when she found it, there was rejoicing. And then the third parable is dealing with the lost son. And uh, we'll spend most of our time this morning dealing with the lost son or the lost child. And that's the reason I wanted the boys and girls to be up here. Uh, that they don't have to go through so many things that most young people go through today. They can avoid that. And uh, also, it's dealing with you adults. There's things that you probably need to bring up to God and be humble and just ask the Lord to forgive you of things that you've done or maybe things that you're still doing that you need help with and you need God. I'm talking about a clear path to heaven this morning. Amen. Uh, in Luke uh, chapter 15 and verse 7, let's just look at uh, a little bit of the highlights of these parables. It says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over the 99 just persons which need no repentance. Now, uh, dealing with the lost coin here in uh, Luke 15, verse 8 there, and it, uh, that's after the woman's found it, says, Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she has found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me. I have found the peace which I have lost. Likewise, I say unto you, and this is what God says the whole parable's about, says, Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. And then dealing with... Uh, uh, the, the lost son, in verse 32, it says, It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and is found. So I'm just going to say to you, when you repent, heaven gets excited. When you have the courage, and hey, listen, uh, now I, I tell the preachers, whenever I'm giving, talking about preacher in preacher's class, I say, try to stay on the platform. But if I catch some of you back there in the back fooling with your, your cell phones, turn them cell phones off. Uh, I may have to come back there and preach on the back two or three rows. Because I want you to get this. If you can get this, you're going to have a better life. I'm talking about you're going to have a wonderful life if you can just get a hold to what I'm talking to you about today, what God has placed on my heart to deliver here this morning. You're going to have a good life. And I want you to have the best life possible. Now let's deal with the lost son here this morning. 
the Bible tells us uh, that he was dead and he's alive, he was lost, and he's found. Uh, and the pathway to, to uh, having this to happen in your life is repentance. I, I looked up Webster, what he had to say about repentance. Repentance, to feel sorry for one's sin and to make up one's mind to do what is right. I'm talking about the definition here. It says to feel sorry for or dissatisfied with something one has done. And then he emphasizes regret. How many of y'all have done something in your life that you regret? Raise your hand. Come on, come on, get your hand up. If, if, you, if, if you've done something, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be transparent this morning. To be exact, I really hate to, I hate to do what I'm going to have to do to myself to expose uh, some of the things that I've done and what I've been to help you see that repentance is so important. These things that you that raised your hand, and by the way, you that raised your hands, you're on your way to repentance right now. God's going to help you this morning. Uh, this is uh, cleaning up your, your soul day. And really, I thought about titling the message, uh, Cleaning Up Your Soul Day. The day that you clean up your soul is when you repent. When, when you look into your life at things that's happened in your life, and you say, God, I'm really sorry for that. I look back over my life, and, and I have grieved the Lord before I got saved, the things that I did. I have grieved the Lord. There's been things that I, I did after I got saved that has grieved the Lord. And I'm sorry. Amen. I'm talking about true repentance this morning. Now, repentance is going to do something for you. Just remember, every time... Someone bows a knee and they say, God, I'm sorry for the way I've lived. I'm sorry for the things. And you start naming those things. Up in heaven, the angels start shouting. They start jumping around and shouting and praising the Lord. And God is, he's worship, they, they, there's worship going on. There's praise going on. There's more happiness in heaven over one sinner, yeah. one person that gets honest with God than, that there, than there is over the 99 rejoicing. Amen? Are y'all getting what I'm saying? Amen. This morning you can make heaven shout yes. right. by you making things right with God in every area of your life. Let's look at the, the, the younger son here. First of all, he was tempted. And uh, I don't know whether to try to come down there or not. Uh, when you get old, you may even fall trying to move around too quickly. But uh, young people, listen, you boys and girls, this, this boy, the things he did, it made a mess out of his life. But uh, he repented. You don't have to go through that. You don't have to make a mess out of your life. His mom and dad... Uh, they tried to get him to stay home and do right and live right, and uh, he chose not to. He was tempted, just like us older people are tempted. We're tempted just like the young people. All of us, we suffer temptation. And then he yielded to the temptation. No doubt there was uh, maybe somebody came, uh, some of his uh I don't know whether he was a teenager. He must have been a he must have been a teenager, maybe, or a young person at least. And some of his friends came by and they said, "Hey, what in the world are you doing, just staying at home all the time, and such a boring life of what you you having to listen to your mom and dad?" And by the way, boys and girls, you need to obey your parents. You need to do listen to your parents and obey your parents because hey, listen. It'll give you a different life than what your friends would bring to you when they say, hey, they're having a lot more fun at these parties that I've been going to. Come go to the party with me. They've got, they've got things over here that, man, is so exciting. But he was tempted and he yielded to the temptation. Now, connecting with the wrong crowd, hey, and this is for adults too, you have to be careful who you run with. 
You need to be careful who, who you become friends with because you need pe- friends that will help you make heaven your home. Now, you can be friends with people outside of the church, but you've got to be the one that dominates. You've got to be the one that exposes Jesus. Just like Elaine, I met her there at Lowe's, and, and it wasn't but a jiffy that the conversation come up about the Lord. And uh, uh, Elaine, uh, <clears throat> my, my wife is a very jealous woman, to, uh, Elaine, but uh, uh, anyway, Elaine just grabbed me and hugged me after I, we visited a little bit. Uh, hey, hey, that's, that's what happens when somebody hears truth. Amen. Uh, you have to be careful who you run with. It's not saying that you don't have a fellowship with people that you don't know, you, but you need to expose Jesus. The Bible said that we're made overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Brother Ty, when we talk about the Lord, it makes us strong. It's a lot. It's, it's hard for me to sin when I've been around somebody for a little bit because I've exposed that I'm a Christian, Come on. that I'm saved. And it's, it's hard for me to lose it, you know, when, when I've already exposed who I am. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Some of you have been reluctant to speak up about Jesus. And the Lord's saying to you today, you need to repent of that and say, God, I want you to make me strong to where I speak up about you. Taking a stand for the Lord. Oh, we need to run with the right crowd. This, this boy left home. When, when you leave, uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, oh, this, this is home right here. The church is home. You're my family. Amen. Uh, they came to Jesus and they said, your, your mom and, and your sister and your brother, they're outside. They, he said, who is my, uh, my mom? Who is my sister? Who is my brothers? He that doeth the will of my father is my sister and my brother. I call Brother Wells. I, I, I shake his hand every, time, every Sunday. I mean, every time, not just Sunday. He comes to all the church, all the services, and I do too. Uh, by the way, you should too. Uh, but I shake his hand and I say, uh, hello, how's my brother today? Yeah. You see, Amen. you're my brother and my sister. Amen. This is home here. This, this boy left home. When you start missing church, and Shay, I, I went by your house yesterday when I was out working on the bus ministry. Well, you wasn't home, I don't guess, though. But you and Carlos, it's good to see y'all in church today. I put so much in this couple's life, in uh, time in their lives. Me and Brother Eddie was he got out on the we went out on the bus ministry yesterday, knocking on doors and trying to help people. And oh, but I, I'm I'm just saying, don't leave home. Be careful that you don't leave. This is home. This, this is that this is that old ship that takes us to heaven. Amen. Amen. This is the old Mount Zion ship that's going to heaven. If you stay on board, you're going to make heaven. Sometimes it, the road gets a little rocky, but hey, listen, folks, I just tell you, don't leave home. Don't go to missing church. Don't go to missing out on, on things that's going to help you to make heaven. This young man, that was one of his problems. He left home. He, he left home when he should have stayed at home. Amen. Oh, my goodness. I, I need to speed up some here. But uh, anyway, the devil will tell you that there's a big party going on out there, that you're missing out on something. But let me just tell you, he's a liar. Now, I, I will say there is a party. They were drinking. And today's, in today's language, they were having drug, taking drugs. They were uh, having premarital sex. They, they were having a party, they were having a ball, and they were having lots of fun. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? The Bible said there's pleasure in sin for a season. Let me just tell you, the devil never tells you the whole story. He never shows that person that takes that drug to make them, oh, feel so high. I feel, oh, he never tells you 
the end story that you watch on the news, those people out there that are homeless, sitting with their head hung down between their legs and don't have anything. They don't have any food. They don't have anything. He never tells you that part of it. God will let you go until you bottom out. Hey, listen. It's amazing how God let that prodigal son just do his thing. He'll let you just do your thing until you bottom out. You better hope that he loves you enough to bring you back in. This, this young man, he woke up one day. He didn't have a home. He didn't have nobody to love him. He didn't have any money. He didn't have any food. He didn't have shelter. He didn't have anything because he had spent it all. Hey, listen. God will let you go. He'll let you go, friend. This, every, to go to heaven, you've got to have it in your heart. You've got to be to where you don't care what people think that you're going to serve God. You're going to live for Him regardless and you're not going to have people putting pressure on you. Oh, what will they think? Brother Allen, what will they think if I come to the altar and bow my knee before God? Brother Dave, what will they think if I, if I, will they think I'm a lesser man if I come up and I kneel before God and truly repent? And ask God to forgive me. Hey, listen. God will let you go. He wants, he wants us to have some strength in us that we're going to stand for Him. Amen. Yes. Now, this is good preaching whether you realize it or not. He went to the place all that he had to eat was the same feed that he was feeding those pigs. He couldn't find a job. Nobody cared for him. He was on the verge of starvation. All of his money was gone. And this one guy hired him to watch his pigs. And he didn't offer to let him come eat at the table. He just said, you go watch the pigs. And while he was tending to the pigs... He saw what the pigs, what he was feeding them, and that became his food also. But the Bible said that he came to himself, and I'm thankful for that. God comes into play at this time. Uh, in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 5, it says, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you unto children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Listen to this verse here, this part here. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourges every son whom he receiveth. If you endure chastising, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? Amen. Hey, God loves you. I told you all that at the beginning. God loves you, every one of you. If you can just place it in your heart, God is in love with me. He loves you. But there's some here today that's going to need to make some changes. You're going to need to repent. You're going to need to ask God to forgive you. Amen? Uh, I just thought about uh, <clears throat> when we come to God, uh, we have to repent. The, the Bible tells us, and, and by the way, you, young people, you don't have to go to the pig pen. Let's, let's take what happened to this guy and apply it to our lives that we don't have to go to the pig pen. You teenagers, you young ladies, you young men, you don't have to go to the pig pen. If you take somebody else's experience and say, I don't want no part of that, you can avoid so much of this that's happened to this young man's life. Uh, the Bible said if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So when you come to the place that you're willing to repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry, 
please forgive me. God said, hey, I'll do it. I'll forgive you. And not only will I forgive you, I'll cleanse you of everything that you've done and give you a brand new lease on life. Hallelujah. Could you give the Lord a hand clap and say, Lord, thank you for that scripture. Glory to God. <clears throat> now, many of you have raised your hand that you need to come and you need to tell God that you're sorry for things that you've done and maybe some of the things that you're still doing in your life today. Oh, I thought about some of the things that you need to repent of I don't want you raising your hand on any of this now, saying it's me. But uh, I've dealt with people in church that lied. You know, maybe some of you, you, you never want to just come out and, and, and say so, and tell a, just a, a bald faced lie. But you sort of shave things a little bit. How many of us want to always be looking good? We, we want the story to turn out that, that we look pretty good. Amen? You, you have to be careful because you may get in a lying mode there. Amen? Oh, let, let, and I told y'all I was going to expose some of, some of the things. I, I used to use tobacco. I, I came up in a home my mama dipped snuff. My daddy smoked bull durham tobacco. I know y'all don't know what bull durham is, probably. It came in a bag. It was the cheapest tobacco you could get to smoke, and you had to roll your own. Uh, my mom, when I was a little boy, she'd say, son, go get me a toothbrush. Now, she wasn't talking about something to brush her teeth with. She was talking about something to dip that snuff with. And a black gum tree... Uh, where you could tear a little sprout right off of the, the thing, and there's a uh, sort of a core there, and uh, I'd skin that, and I'd chew that, and it would make it real fluffy, and I'd make Mama a toothbrush, to where a tooth, um, uh, not a toothbrush, a brush, I guess, so, so she could dip her, she'd put it in her mouth, and then she'd dip it in that snuff and put that snuff in her mouth. I, I used to smoke. I never dipped anything, but I used to smoke. Now, now, y'all listen to me. Uh, smoking is hard to give up. Using tobacco is hard to give up. It really is. It's not going to be easy. But I'm going to tell you the secret. You have to say, God, I'm sorry for defiling this temple of the Holy Ghost. That's what your body is. It's the temple of the Holy Ghost. You have to say, God, I'm sorry for defiling this temple and would you please forgive me? And Lord, by the way, would you help me to overcome? You see, the devil, he wants it to be that you feel like you can't overcome, and therefore you don't even bring it up. But if you'll bring it up and say, Lord, I know that this is wrong, and I'm asking you to forgive me and make me an overcomer, God will start helping you, and heaven rejoices every time. Every time somebody says, Lord, I'm sorry, and I want you to help me, God, God wants to help you to overcome smoking. <clears throat> I, I, I wasn't an alcoholic. I, I, I remember, I, I'm, Brother Edwards, I'm getting too transparent, aren't I? Y'all going to look at me and say, that guy is one more mess. Oh. I remember me and some of my buddies, I can't even remember who the buddies were, but we were out in the woods, uh, and you, you think you can't get in trouble in the woods, but we were out in the woods, I don't know whether we were squirrel hunting or what we were doing, but we found this guy's uh, uh, whiskey. It was, it was uh, the kind that they make out in the, uh, in the country. What, what do they call that? Moonshine. Moonshine, yeah. You've been drinking some too. Uh, but uh, we found this guy's moonshine and we drank it. That was the office tasting stuff I have ever put in my mouth, I think. It burnt and 
and but I mean, we thought we was really something, cause we was drinking this moonshine. We couldn't drink the whole thing. We just drank a little bit of it because it was so tough. But uh, anyway, I, I'm I'm just saying, there's people in church that has problems drinking. Social drinking has become a part of the church world today that a lot of churches, they, they promote the privilege for you to drink. Hey, listen, let me just tell you. The drunkard shall have no part in heaven. It, don't, it doesn't say anything about drinking. But the drunkard shall have no part in heaven. And if you drink a little bit, you're going to be a little bit drunk. If you drink a whole lot, you're going to be a whole lot drunk. You don't have to be to where you stagger around and can't get up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And then let me talk about uh, gambling. Uh, uh, what, what's the name of those places where you can gamble around here? Uh, they, there's places you can go to and, and gamble. What, what's the name of those, some of those places? Help me. A uh, bunch of saints here. You do know Cripple Creek and, and uh, up there in Denver. What's the name of it up there? Black Hawk, Black Hawk and those places. Uh, Y'all would not get tricked quite twice. <clears throat> but, hey, listen, there's people in church that has trouble gambling. Come on. Uh, the Bible doesn't say thou shalt not gamble. But let me just tell you, gambling is a sin. Gambling will send you to hell. There's a spirit that goes with gambling. You're looking at a professional gambler. When I was in the Navy, I didn't even go pick up my check that I would draw from the Navy. I lived on what I made playing cards. It was so bad. I was so hooked on it until I would pull a shift on that ship tired and give out and I'd get in my bunk on the third level of the there was three levels of bunks we just slept on top of each other nearly about but I'd get on, get in my bunk and was start to go to sleep and I'd hear the cards flutter and brother Swartz I couldn't stay in the bunk I had to bail out and get in the game I'm saying there's a spirit that goes with it I remember my soul winning partner down in uh, Arkansas, Brother Harvey Watson, before him and his wife got saved, uh, they went to Las Vegas one time, and uh, and th she hadn't been in no gam, she hadn't done no gambling, but uh, they went down to the casino, and they they gambled, and that spirit got on her. They went back up to their room to go to bed about two or three o'clock in the morning. And that spirit was so strong on her, she got up and got dressed and went back down the, to the casino. I'm saying there's a spirit that goes with it. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Hey, listen, if you have a problem, and there's people in church that has problems with gambling. If you have a problem with gambling, you need to say, God, and, and I know I'm going out over the airways. Hopefully, I'm going to help somebody out there too. But if you have a problem with gambling, you need to repent. Amen. You need to say, God, I'm sorry, and ask the Lord to help you to be an overcomer that you never do it again. Amen. Look, as some of y'all look so solemn. I think I must have hit something there. I didn't know I had gamblers here. Uh, let, another thing that we need to repent of is we get we get angry and we have a foul mouth. How many y'all? No, don't raise your hand. Uh, you have a foul mouth though, and you say things that you shouldn't say. Amen. You need to repent of that. You need to say, God, I'm sorry for the way I behave. You, you may even do it to your wife or to your husband. I ain't through anger. You need to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Hey, when you say, I'm sorry, God goes to clapping His hands. The angels begin to start shouting. And then you ask the Lord, help me, Lord, not to do that again. Did you know when I got saved? I'm telling way too much about myself. But I'm a short timer here anyway. I'm, I'm, I'm going home pretty soon. And I'm not talking about the Phoenix either. 
I'm talking about my real home. <clears throat> well, I think I'll let that pass. Oh, no, I'm, I'm going to tell you. I got saved, and I, I quit smoking, and I quit drinking the day I got saved. I flipped the last cigarette out the window, throw the last beer can away, I was done with it. But I got, I got to the, uh, I worked at a box factory, and at that particular time, I was a press operator, and I was nailing uh, uh, dies onto the, the printing log, and someone or other, I, I mashed my hand, and I let out a cuss word. This is a Christian cussing. Because I'd given my heart to the Lord just that, that same the, that same week and I gave my heart to the Lord and here I am cussing I felt like I had got hit over the head with a hammer I felt so convicted because I said something like that are y'all hearing what I'm saying repent if, if you do have a problem in this area repent ask God to forgive you and for him to help you that you don't do it anymore and I, I thought about uh, I had this one guy that I led to the Lord years ago, and, and he died. And when they were cleaning out his uh, apartment, his area, they found this pornography book under his bed. Did you know people in church have problems with pornography? Some of you here this morning, or some listening, watching on the Internet, have problems with pornography. Hey, let me, let me just say, <clears throat> it's a spirit that gets a hold of people. And if you have a problem with pornography, you need to ask God to forgive you. You need to say, Lord, and I know that there's so much temptation out there. And by the way, all you young ladies, dress right. Don't put more pressure on us than we already have. Having your blouse half unbuttoned and your breasts are shining and, and your thigh sticking out of the, the side of a short dress. Don't do that to us. Cover yourself up because we need to have pure minds. I, I, don't, I don't know women. I, I, I should get with some of you women and find out what tempts y'all because I know y'all suffer temptation just like us men do. Am I, am I preaching to you at all? And by the way, you young ladies, we've got some young ladies here. Don't show your body to the men because that's all they'll want is your body. And then they'll want to discard you. Show them your eyes. Let them fall in love with your heart. And then when you get old, it'll be like me and my wife. I push her around in a wheelchair. She talking this morning about you gonna load the wheelchair up for me. Hey, you'll have them when they when they get old, because they love you. Amen. They don't just love your body. Come on. <clears throat> don't abuse the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hey, let me, let me, and, and I, I know I gotta hurry. I don't have to hurry too much. <clears throat> But uh, did you know you can abuse your body through overeating? Any of y'all have a problem with overeating? You can raise your hand on this one. There's they some folks that's honest here. Some of you act like y'all are really religious. Hey, I have a problem with overeating. I fight that. I pray for me and my wife out loud every day. Lord, help us today to control our eating and help us to lose some weight. My wife, I can't hardly run her to the scales. I say, honey, why don't you weigh? She says, I don't want to weigh. I get on the scales every day. And if that scale starts going in the wrong direction, I say, self, you better get under control. Don't abuse your body with overeating. Don't abuse your body and your life with overtaxing yourself, wanting to get rich. These people in church that has so much pressure trying to get rich, 
They put God on the sideline because they want to become wealthy. And there's a taxation, a mental taxation that takes hold of your life. You don't need that. You need to ask God to forgive you and for Him to help you that you can have a good life. Hey, the most important thing that you've got in life is the day that you live, every day that you live. Somebody that's old as I am definitely knows the value of a day. You see, when you're young, you swap wealth. I mean, you, you swap health for wealth. You'll overtax yourself. But when you get old, you swap wealth for health. Am I talking to some of these older folks? Amen. Because we know the value of what it is to live. Hey, listen, some of you need to repent today. You need to say, God, I'm sorry for the way I have abused this temple that you live in. Please forgive me and help me to get my life in order. I pray for Eddie and Whitney all the time. Uh, they're, they're in, they call to the ministry. I know that. I told Brother Eddie yesterday, I said, you'll make a good pastor one of these days. Oh, just putting a little pressure on him, you know. Oh. Uh, but hey, listen, you have to get things, you have to get your priorities straight. Brother Edward, you need to get your priorities straight too. It's where you smile all the time. You, you're living under pressure, aren't you? Amen. I, I, could go around, I could go around, my son's living under pressure. I told him, get rid of them trucks. Just, just pastor the church. I'm not, I'm, not being, I'm not being mean today. I'm just saying, hey, folks, we need to repent and ask God to help us that we use our time for Him. Fisting with this lady, Elaine, and I could, uh, there's been a bunch more. I, I prayed with two guys down in, well, one in New Mexico and then one in Arizona in a parking lot. This, uh, this guy was coming out of Walmart we struck up a conversation and I talked to him about the Lord and he told me, he said, I'm cold. And I said, what do you mean you're cold? He said, I said, do you go to church? He said, I hadn't been in a while. I said, well, we need to get that straight. And I took him by the hand and I called on God and the Spirit of the Lord came down there in that parking lot and touched that man's soul. We got through praying. I, I helped you. I prayed for him. And then Brother Ty, I said, you need to pray. And ask, because this repentance is real. I said, you need to ask the Lord to forgive you and for him to help you to be an overcomer. I said, and I, I led him in the prayer, helped him to pray. We got through praying. He said, hallelujah, right out there on the parking lot. I'm just saying the Spirit of God will do a miracle. They were enjoy, rejoicing in heaven. The angels were jumping around. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God was clapping His hands. They were rejoicing in heaven when somebody gets honest and says, I really want to repent. I want my heart to be right. I want everything in my life to be purged because, hey, listen, there's a clear path to heaven and I found it. It's through repentance. Amen. It's through making things right with God. Amen. Having a clean heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, folks, I want y'all to make heaven more than I want anything else in my life. And that's the truth. I want you to have a good life and make heaven your home. And I know the secret to it. I know what it's all about. Uh, and you might say, well... I can't do this on my own, and you truly can't. There's a story. Uh, it's in, uh, I had it jotted down, in Mark chapter 9, and I'm not going to take time to read it. But uh, Jesus took uh, James and John and, and Peter, I believe it was, up on the Mount of Transfiguration, and when he came down off the mount, <clears throat> he, he went up there, and the Lord spoke to him and said, This is my beloved Son here. I'm talking about the Father spoke to the Son that was standing there on the, on the earth. 
this does away with the the Jesus only doctrine because uh, there's the Father speaking and the Son listening. That when he said when he said uh, I want y'all to hear him. But anyway, they came down off the Mount of Transfiguration. They got down there, and this man. Uh, he he had, he got the disciples that was left, and he had them praying for his son that was demon possessed, and the the son that was demon possessed, he didn't get delivered, and the the father went to Jesus and he said, uh, the disciples did said why couldn't we why come, why come we couldn't cast him out, but G, Jesus told that that dad that father he said if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. In other words, if you get your faith to rise, do any of y'all remember what I preached the last time I was here? I talked about faith as a way of life. Your faith is going to be growing or your faith is going to be diminishing. And, that, and I, I preached to you about coming to church, reading your Bible, taking time to pray, and it'll make your faith rise. Amen. But anyway, Jesus told him, said, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And that dad said something that was absolutely phenomenal. He said, Lord, I believe. Help thy mind unbelief. That's the same, that's the same prayer that I'm telling you to pray today as far as repenting. You repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry for what I've done. I'm sorry. And you name those things that God brings up in your life that need to be changed. And you name them and say, God, I'm sorry. And I'm going to need your help to overcome this. Did you know the Lord cast that demon out of that boy? That, that dad said, have compassion on us. And if you can do anything, help us. It wasn't no problem for Jesus. Jesus cast that demon out. The boy wallowed in the, on the ground and foamed at the mouth. And, and then he totally went like he was dead. But he wasn't dead. He was delivered. Amen. I'm just saying that God will help you if you repent and ask him to help you. He'll help you. And then the Lord starts, the rejoicing starts. Uh, <clears throat> let me ask today, and I'm closing, I'm closing with this, so everybody listen to me here. Uh, it's going to take courage for you to do what I preach today. It's going to take courage for you to be to where you say, God, I'm sorry. Now, I ask you all at the beginning, uh, if you had regrets, and there was a bunch of you, most of you raised your hand. Some of you didn't have the courage, but most of you raised your hand that you had regrets for things you had done in your life in the past. And what you do, you repent. You say, Lord, I'm sorry. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that you hadn't already prayed, but there may be something that the Holy Spirit is drawing you to this morning that you know that you need to repent and say, I'm sorry. And if you do that, God will come on the scene in your life. But it takes a real man or a real woman that stands against their peers and says, I'm going to be honest with God above what I think other people think about me. But this morning, if you have sin in your life, I want to ask you to have the courage to come. And if you're to where you can kneel, kneel and ask God to forgive you. If you're not to where you can kneel, sit on the front pew there or sit on the altar and repent. Amen? And just ask God to do a work in your life. That Let this be the day that you found the clear path to heaven. Amen? God is wanting to do that. Would you bow your head with me right now? And we're going to ask the Lord to move. Father, I just thank you for your anointing. I thank you for your presence. And God, I'm asking today that you do a miracle in the lives and the hearts of this people that's here today. I'm asking God right now that you'd convict that one, Lord, that's got something going on in their life, that they need your help. They don't want to go to the bottom. They don't want to go to, uh, to the pig pen. But God, they want you to help them. Would you please do that today? 
Give every man and woman, every boy and girl, God, the courage to say, I want to get things right today and have a clear path to heaven. In Jesus' name. Stand with me, if you will.